Good evening, and welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. My name is Allison Koff. I'm a member of Manhattan's Community Board 8, serving the Upper East Side from 59th Street to 96th Street, including Roosevelt Island. Tonight, we have two guests, both long-serving members of Community Board 8, and this is part one with Dave Rosenstein. Dave has been a member of Community Board 8 for 30 years. He started getting involved trying to save Rupert Park and is now the co-chair of the Communications Committee. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Let's start with uh, a little bit about the Communications Committee. So how, what's the role of Communications Committee? How do members get involved? How do we interact with the community around us? Well, unlike most committees that have regular monthly meetings or, or uh, hearings, uh, our committee is really a back office. It's a service committee that serves the board. So we have two primary functions. One is um, the CB8 Speaks, which is a show that uh, began in the early 90s, uh, went into a, a hiatus, then we uh, picked it up again, um, and we're trained here at Manhattan Neighborhood Networks on how to use the equipment, gradually graduated to this uh, studio, which is much more sophisticated, and I have no clue on how to use the, <laughs> the, uh, the production side of it. Um, the other side of the, 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 the uh, committee's work is um, <clears throat> related to news coverage of the Upper East Side, and that's something that we do for board members. Uh, we do report, uh, committee report once a month, which is made available to board members uh, covering the news from various uh, media sources. Uh, because we're public officials, we can make uh, those stories available to other public officials, but not to the general public. So that's not something that, uh, that we can you know, simply put out, because uh, that would be a copyright violation. What we do, though, is as I go through that research every day with 20 or 30 Google Alerts and other printed materials, newspapers, is identify the stories of interest to the community. And I send the, uh, the link from the website, as well as the title of the story, to another member of the committee, um, Sophia James, who puts it on our Facebook page. We try to make available interesting stories that you can go click on the link to and go to their, their website, which is no copyright violation whatsoever. We also uh, support the, um, there's four large scale uh, street fairs, two in the spring, two in the uh, fall, and the community board has a booth there to kind of talk to the public and we've taken that on as a, as a mission to make sure that it happens and, and push uh, board members to come and give two hours of their time for that. Um, from time to time we have had uh, actual meetings with uh, notices to the public, very few of them. One was related to uh, uh, the city was very, very slow in signing its contract with the cable companies. So Time Warner, um, Comcast, uh, Fios, they were all dragging their feet and this particular institution, Manhattan Neighborhood Networks, which is funded by con contributions from all of the cable companies uh, to provide public access television, was using really rickety equipment, it was breaking down, and when they told us about it, we thought, well, we, you know, we're only one community board, but we'll hold a hearing, we'll bring people in, ask them what's going on, how it can be uh, accelerated so this contract will be signed, the money will start flowing again here, and actually we made a difference. So that was one. Another time we had an issue with our, our website. We needed to change the, um, uh, the entity, the company that was maintaining it because it was becoming too costly. We wanted to take it inside. So we had a, a hearing which public members, uh, people from the public uh, as well as board members got together and talked about what we could do. Um, we rebuilt the website. We didn't rebuild it. Actually, a member of this committee um, who is now the city councilman for my district, Ben Kalos, is a, is a uh, computer whiz and has built a number of websites and he built it for us. No charge. He just did it. He taught Will, uh, my co-chair, how to uh, take the tapes from this show, which are huge, humongous television tapes, convert them into a small file that can be put on our website. So it's now you can go to the Community Board's website and see not only this taping but other, other shows. In a nutshell, that's it. I have to correct you. I haven't been on the board 30 years. I actually uh, came on the board in 92. I was on for eight years. When I finished this term, it would be an additional 10 years. Hmm. There was a gap in between. And I didn't um, mention it when we spoke before the show, but I was actually on community board uh, four for five years in the 80s. I worked for a manufacturer there. Still a long time with a long It's a commitment. long time. <laughs> it's a long time. It's public service, and I, and I like it. I like it a lot more being on the board where I live because in board four I didn't live there my company was concerned about the, you know, 
the loss of uh, space for manufacturing mm. or printers. Uh, but I didn't know the issues in the neighborhood. Right. Now I do. Right. What's what's caused you to stay on the board for so long? Is it that you live here and that the issues are more tied to what you're doing on your day-to-day -day basis? It is. It's also because the long, I've been on the Upper East Side for 50 years, mm -hmm. and it's my community. My, my heart is in the West Side, but I haven't been there since I was a teenager. Um, I know the city. I care about the city. Uh, I was trained as a journalist, and I have that kind of a mind that's interested in details and how things work. I like being part of the uh, solution rather than the problem, mm -hmm. as we said back in the 60s, and, um, and I've seen little things change as a result of what I've been able to accomplish, and that's a really good feeling. Sure. And I have a lot of tolerance for frustration at long <laughs> meetings. Well, that's good. Um, you're a PR professional, so what sort of PR methods has the Communications Committee used and maybe not utilized, have changed over the years, um, and what could we be doing better to communicate to the public what we're talking about and what we're working on as a community board? Well, it's a, delicate, um, it's a delicate dance because the policy of this and other community boards is that the only person that speaks for the community board is the board's chair. So um, as a PR person, when I was representing clients, I would very often end up being quoted because I was trying to tell their story. Uh, in our case, it's more a matter of building relationships with journalists so that when there's something interesting that's coming up, um, if I call them, or email them, they'll return my call mm. or email, and I can tell them, you know, we're having a meeting on the future of Second Avenue. Uh, somebody from the borough president's office is coming in to talk about what might be done in relating to zoning to try to save small businesses as the towers begin to go up and the, the walk-ups come down, um, and a reporter will show up. So it's, it's that kind of relationship building. Sure, that makes sense. Um, we have a pretty diverse community on, the, on CB8, and, and our neighbors are everything from an aging population to a very young population. Uh, does that present a challenge when we're trying to communicate? You know, things like saving small businesses may be appealing to um, a certain population, but maybe not another. Um, affordable housing may be incredibly important to certain people. Um, how do we communicate on a whole the gamut of things that we're doing? It's a, it's a good question. Um, we don't put out press releases mm -hmm. saying we have done such and such. Right. Um, the press release has really kind of died out in the, in the, uh, the current media market. Um, our website is a, is a tool. Having resolutions that make sense and are of interest to the journalists who attend mm -hmm. our board meetings matters. If we're um, voting without explaining why we're doing something, a journalist isn't going to see a reason to report that. Um, the biggest problem we have is not so much communicating what we've done as telling people what we're going to do. Mm. And that's what we call posting. Uh, posting has always been a problem. We, we actually go out, the board office as well as board members go out and put notices on lampposts and, and street furniture. Nobody else can do that, mm. but because we're a government agency, we can. Uh, saying that a, a hearing is going to be held on such and such uh, we do very large-scale email blasts, but a lot of people don't know the community board exists, and they don't—they couldn't care less. They don't really think about their city, how it functions, and how they could be involved until there's a notice about a drug treatment program opening mm -hmm. up on 60th Street, and right. then people immediately pass it around to each other. They come to the meeting. They complain, we didn't know. I actually heard one woman at, at a meeting say, well, I did see something on a lamppost, but I don't read lampposts. <laughs> Well, our budget is very small. We're right. a city agency. We have enough to pay the rent on the office, to pay for three or four employees, to do some uh, mailing, to maintain a very sophisticated website that has a humongous number of documents of sure. the things that we're hearing. But we can't send certified letters to every building. Right. Um, it's always going to be a challenge. And all I can say is our website is very easy to find. It's CB. C like community, B like boy, the number eight, M for Manhattan, CB8M.com. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to remember. Right. Look at it. If you put your email address on the little box on the main page that says sign up, you will not get junk. You will not get advertising. You won't get anything that's not government information. Sure. Um, do it. Don't come and complain to us. You don't know what's <laughs> going on when we, we make it available. Sure. And I think uh, you said a, g a really good point that people don't even know what community board is, that it exists, what it deals with. Um, 
are there ways we can be more technologically advanced? Um, we just formed a new technology committee. Um, what are some of the challenges we face with bringing technology on? And also opportunities, one of them could be communicating with the public and, you know, moving away from lampposts, for example. You know what? You're going to have to figure that out as co-chair <laughs> of the technology committee because I don't know. Right. Um, one, we have a Facebook page. I don't subscribe to Facebook. I just don't. I don't like their policy uh, on privacy, mm. and I don't want a Facebook page. Uh, but it's a very widely used. I set uh, with my co-chair and the um, then chair of the board a, a very clear policy that anything we do on online, anything we do uh, on Facebook or Twitter or other social media must be available to every board member and everybody in the public elsewhere because I don't want a two-tier uh, system where mm. some people are technologically connected and others are not and the people who are know more than the people who aren't. Right. So that's a, I think it's a very important uh, distinction. Uh, how, how we can do more, um, I don't have a problem with more notices going out via social media and I leave that to your generation to figure out how to do it <laughs> because I don't twit or is it tweet? tweet. <laughs> That's, it's a good point, and also I, I like the idea of non-segmenting sort of members versus um, community board, um, or members of the community board and members of our community, which is important. Um, I would say last, last question, what, uh, what big changes are on the horizon, if any, on communications, or what could we, could we be doing? I don't see big changes in, in communications. Uh, I think we're doing as much as we can with the resources we have. Uh, some of the issues that sort of overlap the two committees and Gail Brewer's office and, and Ben Kalos, our city council member, along with Dan Garodnik, are all interested in finding a way to get community board meetings and committee meetings on the web. Mm -hmm. That's a huge challenge because of the cost and the staffing and the facilities. Uh, if we have a regular meeting place, we can wire it. Mm -hmm. But if we're, as we are, we have to beg, borrow, and not steal, but get uh, uh, people to give us space for our committee meetings. They're not regular, they're not wired, they're not consistent. Uh, how are we going to find a way to do that? Uh, I don't know the answer, but I know the borough president feels very strong and this is important, and I do too. Great. Well, thanks, Dave. That uh, concludes our segment one, and we'll be back uh, right after this with part two with our co-chair of the communications committee, uh, Will Sanchez. Thank you. Welcome back to CB8 Speaks. I'm Allison Koff, and we're back with our t part two of our interview with the co-chairs of the Communications Committee of Community Board 8 with Will Sanchez. Thanks, Will. Will has lived on the Upper East Side for thir over 30 years. He's been involved with the Community Board for the, last, for the last 10 years. He has served on a number of positions, including secretary for, the, for three years, uh, bringing back the Public Safety Committee, serving as the co-chair to Dave Rosenstein uh, on the Communications Committee, and also serves as the liaison to the Midtown East Business Improvement District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about CB8 Speaks. What's the history? How did we get where we are here? That's a great question. As you mentioned, I joined a community board almost 10 years ago, 10 in June. I was actually a replacement for another community board member that couldn't fulfill the application. As you know, it takes a lot of time to do this. So when I started, there was a CB8 Speaks it was, it was uh, under the guidance of Ken Mills, who was the uh, co-chair, actually the chair of the communications committee at the time. Ken Mills was a very well-beloved and well-known democratic person. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. And in fact, Ken, was, Ken Mills actually had this idea of Community Board A Speaks even before I got there. Um, but I'm not quite sure what the history of that, but it's always been at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, where we are now. And so when I joined, Madeline Peel and Jonathan Peel were the public members of the mm -hmm. Communications Committee. They had their own equipment, which was mm -hmm. very cool, and they would record some of the forums with the two cameras. I remember when I did a public safety one on uh, domestic violence, and they were there with the two cameras, interviewed everybody. I was very impressed. Uh, because they did that uh, with their own equipment on site. They only did occasional shows uh, because it's very time consuming to edit. So they never did a show unlike what we're doing today. Today we're doing in a studio. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, they never did a show in a the studio. They always went out in the field. 
So I was on the community board for two or three years. As you mentioned, I was I brought back the Public Safety Committee, did a few forums. And Dave Vosestein joined the Communications Committee, probably as a co-chair or as a member. And at some point, the Peels had to drop out. Uh, they had other commitments. And Dave wanted to continue CBH Speaks. Allison, he, I mean, he must have asked me at least two or three <laughs> times. And I said, no way. <laughs> but finally, my wife, Monica, wanted to become a public member of the Communications Committee. And, and then Dave latched onto her. We'd like to be a uh, help us revive or return uh, CBH Speaks. And she said, yes, why not? So I followed him here. And I never looked back. Uh. I just fell in love with the place. <laughs> That's so great. we've been doing this show uh, since 2008. Our first guest was David Liston. And we did it upstairs. This, this has four studios. And this is um, uh, the requirements. Oh, well, I'll let you ask other questions about it. But uh, I could go on and on and on. But I'll stop here. <laughs> What's involved with putting it on? How do you, get, um, how do you actually set everything up and, and get it from this interview or pre-interview to it's on the internet and shared? Okay. That's a, good, that's a good question. So we're recording this now on a couple of media and um, uh, I transferred the media here to a hard drive, to an internal hard drive because right now it's being recorded on a high definition XD cam and which is not standard equipment. Nobody has that at a home unless they're professional videographer or something sure. like that. And then I take it, um, in my case, I'm able to take it home because I, had, I have the software, the editing software at home and, and I can bring it up and I can tweak it as necessary. So for this show, for example, um, as you notice, we didn't have an opening, we didn't have any music. So I'll put in the opening, you know, mm -hmm. community, welcome to Community Board A Speaks, I put a little, little music underneath. So when, it, when the show opens up, you hear Ta -da! music and there you are. Mm -hmm. and, and I might do a little bit of editing. Um, for Community Board A Speaks, I, I try to do very, very minor editing, maybe f make up a few f uh, fixes. But generally, what you see is what you get. Huh. That's it. And then, uh, how does it get to YouTube? Well, after I'm satisfied with the program, the software that I use, and most any software that you use, anything editing software, has the capability of creating a master program or even sending it directly to YouTube to have a link. They all do. In my case, I create a master program and then I compress it. You need to compress it. Anything on, on, on the web has to be compressed. So I use software to compress it so it looks really nice and tight. And then YouTube has an upload feature. So we have a channel on YouTube called Community Board, called CPH Speaks. So I go to CPH Speaks, log in through the Gmail account that's associated with YouTube use the upload button and I upload it and it takes you know depending on your internet connection so, and I have good one now it takes less than 15 minutes to upload hmm. and, and from there uh, we have a link and we post that link in our website cb8m.com there's a little tab called CBA speaks I go in and I provide the link to that tab and once I do that it's been it's automatically twittered so our followers on Twitter would know, hey, there's a community board A speaks, they could jump on it. <laughs> or, you know, they can view it at their leisure. So that's how, that's how it goes to, uh, to YouTube. Interesting. And backing up to pre-sitting at this table, how do we get more community board A members involved? That's been my challenge for, for the, the, I mean, we've been doing that, this show for six years now, mm. since 2008, I guess seven years. Uh, uh, it would be seven years in September. Remember, we did the first show September 2008. So initially, our, our thought was, okay, we'll, we'll review, we'll interview the chairs of the various committees. And we've been very successful in that. We've interviewed every committee on the community board except for two, the budget committee and the 197A. Not because of, we didn't try. <laughs> it's just the scheduling didn't work out. Right. And, and just recently, or a few years ago, um, we expanded our capabilities here in that uh, initially only people that were certified with the equipment we allowed to do the hosting. So all the hosting initially was done by Dave and Monica because the three of us, when Dave got us together, 
got trained at the same time. Okay. And, so, uh, and so I said, we needed somebody in the back room. That was me. So Dave and Monica would do all the hosting. And after a while, even though it's a monthly show, they got tired. You know, wait a minute, they got full-time jobs as well. Right. And Dave was going to school, hmm. and Monica was going to school and working. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, how is, how uh, is there enough time in the day? <laughs> that's right. So only a few years ago, uh, we realized that we needed to get more hosts. And so uh, we recruited more public members. Ben Kalos, before he became council member, was a public member, and he did a few shows. It's great. And we invited other board members. We also invited other board members to be hosts. Listen, you don't need to be certified. All you need to do is do the research. Mm -hmm. And Ellen Pudlovy stepped up to the plate. She's done two or three shows very successfully. But it's been a struggle to get more board members uh, to do this. So I'm hoping these 15-minute segments will encourage board members to give it a try. Hmm. This is our official ask to board members. Join and get involved with CB8 Speaks. Um, how did you get to this point yourself? Do you produce other shows? Yes, yes, yes. Well, Manhattan, as I said, uh, I was reluctant at, at uh, joining in with Dave, took him three times, and I followed. I said, oh, my God, when I, when I got here, I just fell in love with the place. I couldn't believe the energy coming, coming from this place. I couldn't believe seeing the people here, but mostly older people. You know, I thought it was going to be just a bunch of teenagers who were going to say, oh, no problem, that's easy. Said, okay, right, you know. <laughs> But no, these were people my age and older, and they were into it. So I said, this is the place for me. And so I took more training. So initially, we took the training to work upstairs, which is the closed studio, which is at the time when he had one camera. Here, we have three cameras. Mm. And, and I decided to, do, to expand my knowledge so I could bring Community Board A Speaks downstairs to the big studios. And I took more training, and, and it's quite extensive. You have to go through, initially you got to go through orientation, and then you have to know how to work the cameras, then you need to know how to work the inside room, where you have to work the robotics, how to work the control panel to do the switching. If you're going to have computer graphics, how to work the computer graphics. If you're going to have the teleprompter, how to work the teleprompter. How to work the phones, some of the, some of the, some of the uh, shows are call-ins. And so it takes a large commitment of time to get as far as I have. I can imagine. And then I, and then I decided to go further, meaning, boy, I'm not happy with um, just taking the show as is and putting it, because sometimes you need to tweak it. Sometimes, initially, we made mistakes in the lower thirds. You know, if you, instead of saying Allison under you, sometimes you would have said Will Sanchez. And I go, oh! <laughs> boo-boo. <laughs> Not so, that I don't want to be Will Sanchez. That's right. <laughs> and I don't want to be Allison. And so, so I take care of that in the edit mode. Um, and, and so when I completed the training, the, the instructor said, now you could have your own show. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm doing this to help out, you know, community board. Now you get your own show. That night, I realized what he meant. And I said, ah, oh. and that's how Got to Run with Will was born almost exactly six years ago. Oh, my gosh. And The idea got one with Will. I said, oh, this is a show about the running culture. And it's a weekly, now it's weekly, and I'm the host. Um, it's a lot of fun to do. I just did my 100th show a few weeks ago. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. That's so exciting. Um, all right, well, in closing, what do we have in store for the future of CB8 Speaks? That's a great question. So I mentioned we want to find a more host, and I think uh, we're on a good path in doing that in these 15-minute segments. Another top, another challenge is finding topics to cover, because we don't want to cover electives. One of our more popular subject matter is to have the local electives, like we've had Dan Garaknik, we had Lapin, we had Kalos, we had Dan Court, we had Senator uh, Kruger, we had Congressman Maloney. The only person we couldn't get, and it bugs me to this day, it was uh, Borough President uh, Scott Stringer. Mm. He would promise us, yes, 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 <laughs> but their staff was just unbelievable. They said, you can only have 15 minutes of him. It's a half-hour show. You can only have 15 minutes of him. Arr. So it's a constant challenge. So um, what I'm hoping is I get more help. Perhaps we, since you joined the Communications Committee, you and Sophia would uh, come up with creative ideas in getting the word out. Come on, do the show. Great. 
Well, thank you, and thank you for your 15 minutes today. Um, that's been the second part of our two-part series with Will Sanchez and Dave Rosenstein, the co-chairs of our Communications Committee for Community Board 8. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Will. Thank you, David. And thank you to all of our community board members uh, and all of our co-chairs and the chairs of the uh, committees. Thank you.